Hello, I'm Nathan Judah. I'm delighted to be joined by Mr. Liam Keane, Warsaw reporter extraordinaire from uh, looks like looks like the bedroom, Liam. You're in, you're in this <laughs> afternoon. <laughs> it is. Well, it's, oh, I said to you already the, the nice, exciting background. The one, the background actually, the Daryl gives me a bit of stick about sometimes on Zoom. So, uh, not, 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 not quite the nice not, not quite deadline day office, mate. But I, I like it. You've, no. got, you've got it all sorted out there. Uh, I say deadline day. Uh, pretty quiet as, as expected at Warsaw, mate. Yeah, uh, the the expected is that it's uh, is that it's going to be quiet. So um, yeah, it's uh, I mean obviously it's it's slightly different this year in that the this transfer window today is uh, international signings or, or Premier League buying off other Premier League clubs. Um, Warsaw's real transfer deadline is going to be the sixteenth, uh, five o'clock, uh, which is the domestic signings. Um, obviously, the bulk of Warsaw's business is always going to be domestic. So. Um, so yeah, as expected, nothing uh, is expected today, um, and nothing. It, my story would have come out by the time this this video does. Um, speaking to Daryl about it, nothing mm -hmm. is expected really between now and uh, and the sixteenth as well. Obviously, okay. financially, it's difficult. He, he did say that um, they they would. They know that basically the only way they're going to get sworn in is, is a free loan when they don't have to pay any wages either, which is understandable. I mean, Lee Pomlet on Friday talking about um, everyone taking sort of pay cuts and, and cost sure. reductions to to save money. Um, it, it's not feasible in, in this climate for for them to to be making signings. Um, it, it's football; anything can happen. We might get a surprise, but as it stands at the moment, it's going to be. Uh, it's going to be nothing, so a lot to report. <laughs> yeah, um, but as for, as for the summer and the way it's gone, I mean, they have made some additions, uh, mm. Liam, and, and, and to be honest, a couple, a couple of exciting ones. Yeah, uh, well, Rory Holden coming in uh, was one that fans wanted, uh, the ones that, one I wanted, and, and having spoken to him in the summer, one that he wanted, mm -hmm. uh, coming on a permanent after his um, after his loan last season. And he started well this season as well, um, got a goal in the first couple of games when it took him, what, 30-odd games last year to do that. Um, and then Jack Rose coming in, on, in uh, as backup goalkeeper, desperately needed. Uh, otherwise, it would have been Liam Roberts for up until now. Mm -hmm. um, and then the three new lads coming in. So we had uh, George Nurse uh, on loan, um, Hayden White and uh, on a free, and Emmanuel Osadevi on a free. And I think all three of them have added, uh, obviously, different characteristics and different qualities, being different positions. But in terms of what they've added to the first team straight away, I think Osadevi's probably had the biggest impact. Mm -hmm. Uh, I know you quite liked him when you saw him uh, the other day in the EFL Trophy. Um, and what I've seen of him, I've, I've enjoyed as well. He's um, He seems a good player. He, something I spoke to him about and Daryl about recently is adding a bit more bite to the midfield. He's uh, he's not afraid to go in for a tackle. So, uh, but adds creativity as well. Um, so I like him. George Nurse, obviously, the game I missed on Saturday, which fans obviously know. Um, he, he got the assist for the only goal in that game. Uh, I've seen the, the goal since and it was a, a lovely pinpoint cross. Um, something that he's going to He's similar to Cameron Pring from last year. He's very good going forward. Um, I think defensively there might be one or two question marks still, but a, a decent prospect. Uh, and then Hayden White hasn't actually played too much, but I, I did say ahead of Saturday's game against Forest Green that the reason he might not have played in midweek is that he, he might be coming in. And uh, for once I was right on something, uh, he's, and he came straight in. So uh, I think all of them have added their own uh, positives to the squad. But in terms of depth, uh, it was desperately needed. Um and they're in a pretty decent position. Uh, I, th I think if I was to speculate a, a little bit, I think Daryl probably would want one or two more if, he, mm. if it was feasible, if they weren't in the situation they're in. But almost every club's in the same situation, particularly in League Two. They're going to struggle to be able to, to afford anyone else. Yeah, um, and I guess, I guess Warsaw, Lima, are in a not bad position, like you say, compared mm. to a lot of other League Two clubs. And to keep a lot of their squad from last year that Daryl's worked with is, is good business in itself. Yeah, that that was um, that was the biggest news back in what was it July now June July whatever it was that that they knew they were going to be keeping the bulk of that squad. Uh, that was the probably the the biggest signing of the, of the window in a, in a weird way that they they were able to keep uh, that squad together uh, and hopefully keep the rest of those players between now and and five o'clock on the sixteenth as well. Um, yeah, that that was a, a massive move, um, and then just as I said, just to add the the depth to it by adding uh, three, four, five faces, with five in total. Obviously, two of them were from last season, um, and then they've got the likes of uh, Sam Perry, uh, Joe Willis, uh, Tom Leak, three young lads who are all sort of uh, getting minutes for the reserve team, but are on the they've all got pro contracts, are all there trying to get a few minutes when they can, and um, so yeah, it's uh, they're they're in a lot healthier position than. 
perhaps they would have been in years gone by uh, had they made an, uh, an overhaul to the squad and then been hit by the financial burden of, of the pandemic as well. Sure. So um, I think, although it's not easy, obviously, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty decent position to be in, I think. Yeah, good position and uh, you know maybe one or two before the 16th, but if not, nothing to worry about. Walsall are in a pretty good position, Liam. Yeah, I think so. And yeah, just to reiterate what Daryl said, it's that as it stands, uh, and obviously things can change, but as it stands, and obviously the pandemic doesn't look like it's going to go anywhere, uh, go anywhere anytime soon. So it will be a free loan uh, if they can get anyone in. Um, a free loan being the, the parent club pay, pays the wages as well. So um, how likely that is, is, is pretty unlikely. Daryl is, I think, pretty content with what he's got. Um, pretty content with the the notion that he's going to have to stick with what he's got uh, unless anything drastically changes. Um, and, and I think that's the, the same conversation will be happening on the, on the 16th. I, I said, again, unless anything drastically changes, which I think is very unlikely. And uh, unless uh, the government get that together, we're all back in stadiums within two weeks. <laughs> I don't think it'll be happening. Yeah, hopefully sooner rather than later. Uh, thank you very much, Liam. Uh, Liam will be letting us know the build-up for their big game against Colchester on Saturday. Looking forward to it. Cheers, pal. Cheers, mate.